Hey guys, this is Beck Draft, and welcome to another episode on Create Above and Beyond. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you're playing through this mod pack yourself, or if you love the Create Mod or Redstone Engineering, then this is the series and the channel for you. So be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications so you never miss when another video comes out. So, a lot of work has been done since last episode. We have completely migrated all of our industry over to where our mega base is soon going to live. We have all of our contraptions moved over. We have completely left the jungle base behind. Maybe one day we'll go back there. But this is where we're going to be continuing the series from. So I'm going to take you around because there are a few things that I have changed. So here is where we're now generating our kinetic mechanisms. We got the kelp farm there, the clay being generated right over there. We have our andesite coming up from the bedrock floor right here. And of course, this is where we're generating the algal brick. This is where we're generating the andesite alloy. And of course, this is where we're assembling the kinetic mechanisms and they are being collected down here. This is a much more streamlined process than what we had set up before in the jungle base, which was just a bunch of spaghetti thrown together. One major difference that we have with this particular line is this right here. This is an enchanted saw. So if I go into the market and we check out the, what is it under? Uh, we got overview, high aspirations, shipments, market, here we go. So if we surrender a diamond saw and five gold coins, which we have plenty of from our silver farm, we can get an unbreakable saw. And going forward, you can actually get unbreakable tools for each of the mechanisms that we need to build going forward. That way we don't have to keep crafting those and feeding them into this. Dropping down to bedrock, this is now our andesite generation. So we have four drills instead of the one that we had before. We're actually feeding all of that stone into a bubble elevator, same as before, but the granite, the diorite, and the gabbro were actually filtering into this drawer, and we're just dumping that into lava for now. So all of the andesite is getting fed up to the surface, and we're now generating way more than enough andesite to keep up with the farm. The actual bottleneck right now is clay, but once we get brass machines going and get some crushing wheels, then we'll be able to generate clay a lot quicker. Coming back to the corner, we have our silver farm over here. It's the same exact thing that we built before and it's cranking out tons of silver for us. Over here, I actually have two wood farms feeding into a centralized wood highway. So the idea here is for resources that we're going to need for multiple different things, I'm gonna have one area where we generate that specific resource and then feed it via this belt throughout the, the factory and give it to the different contraptions that require it. So so we're going to do this for wood right now and then going forward anything else that we're going to need a lot of we'll do something similar next to the wood farm i set up a pretty basic potato farm because baked potatoes are actually a pretty good food source and are really easy to craft so the potatoes are getting dropped up there via the portable storage interfaces then they're going to drop down here and get smoked into baked potatoes and any of the buddy beans or buddy cards or any uh, poisonous potatoes anything else that comes out of the farm is just getting avoided for now So we now have a steady automatic source of food speaking of the farmers delight buddy card set from the potato farm and the silver farm We actually got enough cards that we were able to complete it So we now have the farmers delight wrong button the farmers delight metal and the buff that you get from this is actually Nourishment so I'm choosing to have this one right now versus the speed boost that you get from the base set metal so what nourishment does is it actually makes it so that your hunger doesn't naturally drop over time the only way your hunger will fall your saturation as you may call it is if you take damage so if i were to take damage then it would fall and i would have to eat but otherwise we won't have to eat in the opposite corner from the silver farm, we have rebuilt our iron farm with a couple of upgrades. So what we have here is we have the same design that we had before, but we're now taking all of the flint and the iron nuggets and putting them onto this belt. So all of the flint is actually gathering up in this drawer right here. The iron nuggets are going into this basin where this mechanical press is pressing them down into iron ingots. And right now we have about two and a half stacks of iron ingots collected up in this farm. Now, one thing I wanna mention 
about these drawers is I actually added a new upgrade to them. This is the void upgrade, which is made with eight obsidian and an upgrade template. And what this does is it destroys any excess items once the drawer is completely filled up. That way we don't have to worry about overflow. And I also added that upgrade to all of the drawers in our kinetic mechanism farm as well. Next to the iron farm, we got our rubber farm. And across from that is where we have our tinkers smeltery. So that is where we have everything built in the new area. Last but not least, I am now standing on top of our power plant. So like I said with the wood, for things that we're going to need a lot of across various contraptions, I want to have a centralized place where we're doing it. So for create mod power, I set up 20 water wheels here and they're all going and they're powering bunch of farms over here so we have the rubber farm the iron farm and the kinetic mechanism farm are all being generated by these water wheels and anything else that we build we're going to hook up to our main power plant as well and going forward so we can keep up with the power demand once we're able to get a mass amount of windmills we're going to be replacing all the water wheels with windmills and then eventually i think we would replace the windmills with flywheels once we get the resources for that as well but we're going to try to keep all of that in this centralized place so for the mega base, there is a lot we have to do before we can start building it, but I did build the schematic cannon already and I plopped the mega base schematic down into that. And I was able to get the materials checklist for the mega base. There is quite a bit of materials. The biggest highlights are we need about 1400 orange stained glass panes and the big, big, big why that we're going to need is about 19,000 white concrete of various chiseled textures and a ton of stone bricks. We're also going to need quartz. Um, we're going to need various other concrete colors and random items. We need a lot of iron trap doors and a lot of iron bars. Since we're generating iron, we shouldn't have a problem there. So I definitely want to make progress towards the resource collection for the mega base in this episode and possibly even starting it. I don't know. I'm not guaranteeing anything right now. We'll see what happens. I have the official plans for this episode in our book. So number one is we want to get the precision mechanisms going so we can get brass machinery up and running. That's the very first thing we're going to do in this episode. After we have that going, I want to make a mechanical crafter large enough to make us some crushing wheels. That way we can start automating sand because we're going to need a ton of sand for the mega base build to get all the concrete and the glass and it will make it easier to get clay for the kinetic mechanism generator as well. Well, so then number three, like I said, there is the sand generator. And then finally, if we have time, I want to go to the roguelike dungeon, which is actually right over the horizon that way and see if we can find some skeleton spawners so that we can start farming up bones because for the white concrete we're going to need, we're going to need 37 or 38 stacks of white dye. So bones are probably the easiest way to get that. So the first thing we're going to do is the precision mechanism. So we have to get all of this industry set up. And the way that we're going to do it is we're actually going to just tack it on to the end of the kinetic mechanism generator so that we can just feed probably half of our kinetic mechanisms into the precision mechanism generator and then we will keep half of them in a chest for use to make andesite machines. So if we look at the quest log once again, we're going to have to generate quartz, crystals, um, redstone, was this uh, destabilized redstone, which will help us to make redstone dust. And then we also need molten iron, which we can do with a tinker's melter, which is a smaller version of the smeltery that we've already built. So there is a ton of work that we have to do. Let's get started. Okay, progress has been made. We are currently setting up the contraption that will make us our Certus Quartz Crystals. So if I didn't actually explain before, this line right here leads you to getting the Certus Quartz Crystals. This line right here leads you to Destabilized Redstone. Destabilized Redstone plus Certus Quartz Crystal gets you the Rose Quartz. And then of course, this line gets you the Molten Iron. Molten Iron plus Rose Quartz gets you the Electron Tubes, which are what you need to create the Precision Mechanisms. I can't remember if I actually said that before. But anyway, this is what we have set up. So for the Certus Quartz Seeds, what exactly you need to do with these? First off, I needed to craft one using sand and then uh, Certus Quartz Dust, which you can do just by putting Certus Quartz, which I've gotten from just doing some mining sessions into a Millstone. So once you have a seed, 
what you have to do with it essentially is you have to feed it through a sequenced assembly of water spouts and it will slowly grow so it's got to go through three different stages first it's tiny then it's small and then finally we have the quartz crystals so every four water that get dispensed onto it it grows in its cycle i can show you guys exactly how this works right here so if i dump the seed right there it's going to go around in a circle it's going to get the water dispensed on it every fourth time it's going to grow and then in the last stage we're going to finally have the certus quartz crystal now you can keep this going with the certus quartz crystals forever because you take your certus quartz crystal put it in a mechanical crafter and then you get two seeds so you're effectively doubling it every time and creating infinite crystals which is super super cool so what we're gonna do is we're probably set up a a um a drawer here that will pull just the certus quartz crystals off of this line and then the seeds will continuously go ring around the rosy until they fully grow and then we'll probably have another line coming back in dropping seeds back onto this belt and we will have our quartz crystals now over here i had to set up a water pipeline and let me show you guys what we have over there by the ocean so at the edge of the ocean, we set up a hose pulley and a long line of copper pipes with pumps that are feeding the water back to the contraption. And we actually made a, uh, a fluid tank. You can see it over there to store up a bunch of water in case we need it elsewhere too, back at the factory. So with the create mod, if you use a hose pulley with a liquid source of 10,000 blocks or more, so for example, with this water, if there's 10,000 or more water source blocks, then it is considered an infinite supply. If you hover over this, it says bottomless supply. That means we will never run out of water. You can do this with lava as well in the nether. More progress. We are now about halfway through the second step. The second step being getting the destabilized redstone so here's what we got going on over here we have a millstone and the millstone is continuously milling sky stone we actually had some sky stone from the meteor back at the jungle base so when a millstone does mill down sky stone it actually gives you sky stone dust and it gives you the sky stone back so the sky stone is effectively indestructible so we take that sky stone dust and we feed it into this basin right here mix it with water and then we get volatile sky solution then we take that volatile volatile sky solution and we feed it into this basin right here and then the next thing that we still have to set up is we have to set up a charging station to get charged crystals. So the charged certus quartz crystal is you take, take a certus quartz and you put it into a charger and then it will be powered. And then we can use the charged certus quartz crystal and the volatile sky solution to get destabilized redstone. Then destabilized redstone plus crystal equals rose quartz <laughs> and then the final thing once we have the rose quartz is we need to get the melted iron which we'll probably just set up a small iron farm over here i keep pressing the wrong button sorry we'll probably just set up a small iron farm above this and squeeze that molten iron down here when the rose quartz reaches this depot and then we will be feeding all of the electron tubes that we end up with into the deployers which will be at the end here to create the precision mechanisms so i just realized in order to make the fluid crystals to make the charger we need one charge certus quartz crystal so we can't even make the charger unless we have a charge certus quartz crystal so i found out that these do generate in the world they are found rarely or honestly, I could just buy the Fluix Crystal because I do have a ton of silver. It's really not that much. It's only 32 silver and you get eight Fluix Crystals plus 10 silver to get the card. I think I might do that anyway because I do need another Crimson Dynamo. And if I use 30 silver, I get a Trade Station and a uh, sorry Sterling Dynamo. Um, 30 silver gets me Trade Station and Sterling Dynamo. So I think I might just do that. Um, <sighs> yeah, I don't feel like mining. Let's just do that. Okay, we got the card, and we got the Sterling Dynamo on the Trade Station, and I actually realized I could probably just swap out the Flux Crystal real quick in the Trade Station over at my Silver Farm, and that is it. There we go. We got our crystals. They're going down into the chest here, but yep, we got the crystals. 
Everything is now in place to generate the destabilized redstone, and I'm actually really surprised and proud of how compact I was able to get this part of the machine. So let me show you what we got going on. So here is the charger. We have the Sterling Dynamo on top of it, generating the RF. That will charge up the crystal, which is currently in here. So once we have the Voltile Sky Solution and the Crystal mixed together, it will send the Destabilized Redstone over here to this basin. It's currently full, so nothing's happening. Once it is done, the Uncharged Crystal will come out over here, go and get recharged, and then circle back in. Then, of course, we have the Skystone Dust. Uh, is that what it's called? Is it, uh, Skystone Dust. We have that generating over here, feeding into here, which is being mixed with water to create the Voltile Sky Solution. So... Essentially, once we have the crystals going, they're just going to be fed into that basin right here. I can actually do one right now. So that will feed into there, and for some reason, it's not working. Let me see why. And in total Jagweed style, I forgot to hook up the mixers. There we go! And it is now off to the races, so that should gener generate the Rose Quartz. There it goes, and it's actually going to get fed out over here. Okay, we have made it to the very last step, and that is Iron Generation. So I've set up a seared melter here with the sealed seared heater from Tinker's Construct, and the idea is that we're going to feed wood into the heater, and that will heat the melter, and then we will feed Iron Nuggets into the melter. And the equivalent is actually we need one nuggets per electron tube so i think if we set up an iron farm which is practically the same thing that we have over there and just hook it up to this and feed the nuggets into it that should be plenty but i already have some molten iron in this spout right here so i can actually show you guys what's going to happen so once we get a crystal it will come out right here it will go into this basin here mix up into rose quartz poop out over here then it will get turned into an electron tube and there's actually supposed to be a funnel right there that will pull it into the drawer and spit it out to go to the deployers. So that's pretty much it. All we got to do is set up the iron farm, feed the wood into the heater here, and that will do it. And there it is. Everything is now in place to produce our electron tubes automatically, except it's not because there's a couple more things that we're going to need that actually require brass machines to do the first of which is a mechanical crafter so that we can effectively double all of our certus quartz crystals because the way that we're going to do that is if we take a certus quartz crystal and we actually put it into a mechanical crafter right i don't know why it doesn't show that recipe but if we put a certus quartz crystal into a mechanical crafter we actually get two seeds out of it which means that we can effectively double it is this it right here yeah so if we put certus quartz into a mechanical crafter you get the two seeds so we need mechanical crafters and in order to get that we need a brass machine and secondly we're going to need some brass tunnels so that we can evenly distribute the crystals that we get and so we can evenly distribute the electron tubes at the end into each of the deployers so I, I manually made 32 Certus Quartz seeds, and if I just dump them right here, then we should get 32 precision mechanisms, and then that would mean we can make two brass machines. So hopefully this should work out. Once we have the finished product, I'll show you guys it in action as well. But I just ran into one of our first issues with this system, and it's that it's too slow. <laughs> so these spouts right here actually can't keep up with the demand for water. So if there was like three or four of these seeds going around at once, they would eventually hit a standstill. So they can't fill up quickly enough to be able to handle more than one seed at a time. And that actually drains our water supply and the pumps aren't quick enough to keep up with it. So what we're going to need to do is probably, I think the easiest thing to do is actually to add a dedicated power supply just for the water pumps and make it go as fast as humanly possible so that it can keep up with the demand for water. So we're gonna have to take a little segue and do that if we want this to work because i'm not going to stand here and do one crystal at a time it's just gonna take way too long i mean i could but you know this is above and beyond we need to go above and beyond we need to keep it going as quickly as possible 
One other quick thing I did is I made a stressometer and hooked it up to our power plant here so that we can actually see how much stress the entire contraption is using. And the idea is we're going to just string along all of the contraptions together to get as many mechanisms as we can as quickly as possible. So in this case, we're using just, it's around 7,200 stress units. We only have 736 stress units remaining from our current power plant. So we're probably gonna wanna upgrade to wind mills sooner rather than later so that we can keep up with the demand and um if we wanted to double the speed of everything as well which we we're probably going to want to eventually it will help adding the windmills as well all right so i set up some water wheels specifically dedicated to pumping water and i think we've solved that bottleneck so now i can throw in however many seeds i want and the water will keep up with it for example i'll throw a few on here right now and now you can see that they just keep going ring around the rosy and the water is quickly filling back up in each of the spouts so i ended up having to use 20 water wheels and we that effectively quadrupled the speed at which the water is coming through so we shouldn't have any problems with this whatsoever so let's push this bad boy through and get it done all right so we're now manually crafting up the precision mechanisms we should get all 16 of them get the two brass machines and get this bad boy done. So the next problem is how do we get brass? <laughs> because we need brass casings to make brass machines, which require brass sheets, which require brass ingots. So the way that we're gonna do this is we will set up a mixer and we'll have to mix together copper and zinc and that will give us brass. And then we can pump the molten brass. We can actually pump it into our Tinker Smeltery and then cast it out into ingots. That should work just fine. And then we will finally be able to finish this thing. So here's the idea. We melt up copper and zinc in the Tinker Smeltery. We pump out those metals into the basin. They then get mixed together into brass. Right now it's currently going. Then we'll have, I think it should be enough for a couple ingots of Brass, it's all complete and then we just reverse the flow of the pump and it gets pumped back into the smeltery So once the smeltery is filled up with the brass we can then cast it into ingots and Here are our first two brass machines So before I forget I'm gonna come in here and complete chapter 2 because we get a few goodies for completing it We get 16 precision mechanisms 1 to 5 quartz and 1 to 5 brass ingots That's gonna be extremely useful going forward Unfortunately, this episode is already way longer than I would have liked it to be, so I'm going to go ahead and finish up the Mechanical Crafter for the Quartz Doubling, and that's going to be it for our Automated Brass. Then we're going to have to set up some Crushing Wheels to get sand, because actually right now my sand generation has halted because the strainers are completely empty, so we're going to go ahead and do that as well, and I'll show you guys that at the beginning of next episode. But thank you guys so much for joining me. If you like this, please don't hesitate to hit that thumbs up, and make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell for notifications so you don't miss when another video comes out. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Take care and bye-bye. Oh, yeah,